स्टूडेंट्स आई अनिल कुमार स्वाई वेलकम यू वंस अगेन फॉर ज्ञान ज्योति ऑनलाइन क्लासेस स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो दैट टुडे आई विल टीच यू हिस्ट्री एंड द फर्स्ट चैप्टर स्टूडेंट द फर्स्ट चैप्टर वी ऑल नो दैट वी हैव स्टडीड इन द क्लास बट ड्यू टू सम प्रॉब्लम्स वी हैव वी आर नॉट अपलोडेड द वीडियो YouTube. So once again, I will teach you the chapter when, when, and how the very first chapter of the section history. And so, friends, the chapter itself speaks that when, when, and how. When means ka, when means kaha, how means kaise. So in Hindi, if we say, so what about we are speaking about or what? And that is about history. When history, is, when it is started, where. कहाँ से शुरुआत हुआ मीन्स फ्रॉम वेर एंड हाउ हाउ इट स्टार्ट सो इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर और इन द प्रीवियस क्लास ओके स्टूडेंट देन इन द फर्स्ट सॉरी इन द प्रीवियस क्लास इन क्लास सिक्स वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड द सेम थिंग्स बट वी स्टडीड मैक्सिमम अबाउट द एंशियंट हिस्ट्री अबाउट द अर्ली मैन द प्रिमिटिव एरा But now, in this class seven, we study about the medieval period. Students, history is divided into three parts. The first one is ancient. The second one is medieval. Students. Uh, we have studied about ancient history in the previous class six. Then we will study about medieval now. And the third one is modern era, which consists of the British rule and the modern era, which we are studying. So, what does medieval mean? The first one is the we will study about medieval period. medieval period what does medieval period um, the name medieval stands for having studied the history of ancient india in the uh, previous class and how india changed but now in order to understand the modern india we all have to study the medieval history uh, in the in previous class also as i have told you that uh, our modern era depends and it is depends upon the history of our past Now what we are producing now that is all the contribution of the past of our ancestors we can say. In the present class we will be able to take to a journey into the medieval times. But how we will discover India as it was just before the modern times. Students, first of all we study about the meaning. Students, what about the meaning? That what is the meaning of medieval India in history? The word medieval means the Middle Ages. Students, it means the word. It means the Middle Ages or the Middle Period. It lies between the ancient period and the modern period. The mid part is known as the medieval period. The medieval period in Indian history began in the eighth century. Students, this is the most important thing. The medieval history in India began in the eighth century. Eighth century is E, and came to an end in the eighteenth century. This is very simple thing. It started from eighth century and came to end in the eighteenth century. So it spread about thousand years. Students, in class six we have learned about the meaning of century. It means a period of hundred years. So about tenth century it means. That the medieval period continued to hundred, sorry, one thousand years. Then, what were some landmarks of the medieval period, which has made us to know about it?
what about the landmarks historians friends please listen it carefully historians treat 8th century as a turning point a landmark because why it is not so it is because many important changes occurred in the 8th century so many important changes occurred in the 8th century it was around this time that a new stage in indian history began political disunity the rule of the indian feudalism and increased contacts with other civilizations were some of the changes that occurred around this time these changes were so important that they were uh, influenced many aspects of the indian society friends this type of landmarks some changes in the medieval period like uh, the political disunity and having contact with the different civilizations and feudalism that uh, derived a change in the indian society and influenced the society also then this is on the first what about the second the second landmark in the medieval period was when the medieval period came to an end the century saw the gradual break up of the mighty mughal empire and the rise of the british empire as i have told you students that british ruled us for more than 200 years we got independence in the year 1947 so after the declining of the mughal empire the british empire rose up and this with this developments the modern period in the indian history began students after the british empire rule we can say when they started to rule that was for that period was for the so of the emergence of the medieval sorry modern modern period in indian history so the change does not occur everywhere at the same time the medieval period did not last for the same period throughout the uh, world history we know the medieval period in india lasted from the 8th to 8th century see but in europe medieval period began in the 6th century and ended in the 15th century students remember from 8th to 18th century it was a medieval period in india but in europe it was different from 6th to 15th century it was a medieval period the time was different what the medieval period was in our country it was different from that of the europe then students students uh, what about the next we we'll move further that pace of change how the change took place in the medieval period what were the different changes let us first look over the process of change is generally spread over a long period of time changes in society come about in a gradual manner changes in the indian society had begun earlier in the 8th century and the process of change continued even after the 8th century but this changes to uh, the roots in the 8th century see so then the phase of change is we knew that how the demon our society changed from 18th century to the 18th sorry from 8th century to the 18th century friends next we will study about the significance Significance means the importance of the medieval period. The medieval period was in very many ways, various ways, different from the ancient period. Why it was so? This marks the transition period from the ancient to modern. During the medieval period, changes occurred in the political, the social, and the economic life of a country. In a way, the culture that we have. inherited was a result of this important changes so what i have told you that the culture the tradition the art custom culture everything what we have inherited now that was all about the contributions of the past students then we move forward the sources of information
students so what were the sources of information from which we knew about the existence of the medieval period there must be some evidences clues so so what are the what are the clues so mainly we have studied in class 6 also there are mainly two types of sources the first one is archaeological and the second one is literary literary sources then we are aware about the past we have to depend on some evidences or clues of history we know about the past only we have some evidences these sources of information are of two types the first one is archaeological
students from uh, archaeological sources. The first example is monuments. Monuments is further divided into secular monuments. So, what can be secular monuments? It are the buildings, so like the Kutub Minar, Red Fort, palaces, etc., etc. Uh, religious structures can be the temples and mosques, like the I, I can give an example of the Bhishwari Temple and Humayun Strong, Darga of Hazrat Nizam Masjid, Jama Masjid. So these are religious structures and the second third one is the remains. The remains of gardens such as the Salimar Bar, Nisar Bar, and all public utility structures such as pools, such as ponds like the Hose Alai, Hoses Samsi, schools, madrasas, they all are the remains of the past. Then students, the second example of archaeological sources is coins. The second example in archaeological sources is coins. Students, many ancient kings minted coins in their names. These coins are available for this entire medieval period. These coins furnish a valuable information to us. And now students, you know if the if there is a study about coins, if somebody studies about the coin, then it is called numismatics. Students, the study of coins is called numismatics. Then what can coin provide us different information? We have read in the in the preceding class that early coins contain a few symbols. During great areas, the coin came to depict dates and figures of rulers and uh, their pictures also. Then, medieval coins have the name of the mint as well. They help us to fix the chronology. In addition, these coins provide clues about the metallurgy, art, religion, and trade links also. They have revealed, the coins have revealed about different facts about the reign of Muhammad. In Tughlaq, not just Tughlaq, it uh, reveals about the standard of living, the life and lifestyle of all the rulers who have minted. Then, friends, the next example is the institutions. Friends, the first one is the monument, the second one is coins, the third one is institutions. Then, friends, what are inscriptions? Inscriptions are writings on the stones, on plates of copper. They are they may be found on walls, rocks, on pillars. They are also found in large numbers in village temples. These inscriptions provide a great deal of information about the past, about the early medieval period. They are generally found on buildings. So students, uh, as uh, I have told you that the study of coins was known as numismatics, the study of inscriptions is also known as abhidhyaya. Friends, the study of inscriptions is known as epigraphy. Now the fourth point is paintings. Friends, we know in the ancient time, what the early humans were doing, what all about their lifestyle also, they were painting on the walls of the caves and walls of the different, sorry, in the rocks surfaces also, they were painting. But now, what about the paintings in the middle era? So, they are also the sources, the great sources of information. They provide general as well as specific information. The medieval paintings are of different kinds. These are wall paintings which we call murals. Mural students. Then miniature paintings are also available. These paintings are of small size. Then the miniature paintings were also drawn to illustrate books. The painters drew portraits of persons and painted scenes of the palaces and events. So these paintings, let us know about the uh, persons, places and events in these different types of paintings. Many of these paintings are like photographs. They drew it so clearly. 
so beautiful that it was looking uh, like a photograph. Then friends, the Jain paintings, the Mughal paintings, Rajput paintings, Kangra paintings, these are preserved at many places in our country and these are some of the greatest examples of medieval paintings in the medieval era. Friends, after paintings, we will study about music, the fifth source of information in the archaeological section is music. Friends, the study of music reveals the evolution of a bright culture. Friends, we all know that music has no language, no bar, no custom. It, it united all the people in one thread. The Hindustani music developed due to the influence of the Persian and Arabic culture on the classical Indian music. So it's Hindustani music I am writing here. It emerged at that time and Swords so musical instruments and old ragas and new kinds of musical compositions such as Kowalis tells us about the text of the people. Then students, so in a bracket, you know, did you know section in the yellow bracket we have uh, we can see that it is written in the page number H8 that Persian form of chorus singing is called Kowali. We have seen in different films in serials also uh, when a group of people sitting and in a chorus they are singing a song that is called Kowali. And what about Raga students? Raga is a combination of different musical notes to convey emotional emotions through music. Students, then it was all about the archaeological sources. Now we will move to the literary sources. Students, what about the literary sources? Then, uh, we have read in the previous class that handwritten records of the paths in the form of books are called manuscripts. Yes, we have studied about that. The manuscripts constitute literary sources. It was written in the, actually like the palm leaves, birch or bark trees and later on paper. Historians use the available literary works or books which were written by the people at that time as sources of information. Literary sources are divided into religious and secular sources. The first one is religious. The first literary source is the religious sources. What can be religious sources, students? Uh, it can be the writings dealing with the religious constitute religious sources. Many books written during the medieval period were based on religious themes. The religious works like the Ramayana of Ramayana of Tulsidas, Guru Granth Sahib, and the compositions of Bhaktas are examples of religious literature. Students, I will write the Ramayana by Tulsidas. Ramayana and Guru Sahib are examples of religious sources in this literature, literary sources of the middle period. Then students will study about secular sources. Students, what about the secular sources? can be there are many examples of secular sources. The first one is chronicles. Students, what are chronicles? They are accounts of the life of the activities of the rulers and dynasties and the dynasties. And uh, some examples are the Akbar Nama. Akbar Nama written by 
Abul Ghazal is one of the examples of the chronicle. So, and the second one is memoirs. The second example of secular literature is memoirs. It is an autobiographical account of the lives of the rulers, such as Babur's Tuzuke Babari. Students have told you autobiography means if a person write about himself, write about his biography, that is called autobiography. So, Tuzuke Babari, written by Baba, is one of the autobiography, and that was called as memoirs. The third one is accounts of The accounts of the different travelers who have visited India at that time. Uh, who have visited that uh, some examples are Al Baruni. So, so that his descriptions were a part of accounts of various travels. Then the fourth one is scientific writings. Students. What does, what does it contain? Scientific writings such as Al-Baruni's Kitab Al-Hind That is an example of uh, the scientific writings And the fourth, fifth one is, sorry, friends, the fifth one is the philosophical works The philosophical works it, uh, its example is the fatwa e zahandari fatwa e zahandari of Burma. Philosophical work means it can be writings about the philosophies, and the sixth one is the imperial orders. Students. The sixth one is imperial order. What does it mean, students? It means farmans, means this other imperial documents you can say. It means these are available in evidence for the uh, Mughal period. Means if a king announces a new rule or a new tax reform, then it is written somewhere. That is called the farmans. It's the order of the king. And the last uh, last three is the uh, seventh one is the administrative records. The seventh one is the administrative records. What are administrative records, friends? Uh, these are relative to the land revenue and the tax reforms, I can say. Many such documents are available for the later medieval period. The eighth one is traders and bankers account. And the last one is the newsletter. Friends. And the last one is number 9, newspaper. Friends, you will see there are 9 examples of secular sources, literary sources. The newsletter is the Akbharat and Sufi's record. It can be like the newspapers. So, historians try to understand the information given in the, these books and documents. With this information, they reconstruct the past. It is important they reconstruct the past without any prejudice. Students, they must be very independent to uh, research about the past. They must not be biased about a particular religion or a particular king. Then we will study the uh, I can say the last the second last topic. Changing now at the subcontinent. Students, you know why our country was known as subcontinent because it was so vast, so huge 
that it was known as subcontinent earlier on. So, who gave the name? Our country has also been uh, called by different names. We call our country as Bharat, India, Hindustan. A lot of names have been given to our country. Then, the name Bharat was used for a group of people. So, from where it is, where it came from, the name Bharat is used for when a group of people lived in the northwest of India. This is mentioned in the Rig Veda, students. Rig Veda. Later, the same name was used for the entire country. Our name, our country's name, can be written as India, Bharat, Hindustan. India again, uh, we most of the times we say India, Bharat, Hindustan, the three names, the famous names. The word India, the famous name, the word India, which is the uh, I guess, official name. The word India comes from the river Indus. In Sanskrit, Indus is called Sindhu. The Iranians used to pronounce Sindhu as Hindus or Hind. The Greeks also called it Hindus. The land to the east of the river Indus was called Sindhu. Thus acquired the name India. When the Greeks and Iranians called the name of the river as Indus, Hindus, Hind. Thus, the word Hindustan also came from Indus. During medieval times, the Persian name Hind and Hindustan became popular. So, students, in the last subtopic of this chapter, when, when, and how is the feudalism? Students, we have to know the concept what is feudalism. So, the Europe of medieval times, I have told you that the difference of period in of medieval period in India and Europe both were different. So, the Europe in medieval times was one of the most backward continents. Students, remember the word backward continent in the world. But now, what is Europe? Europe is one of the most developed, most advanced continents now. But it was very backward at the medieval times. It was exactly the opposite. It was exactly the opposite of what it has become during modern times. There was no strong ruler to protect people. There was hardly any political security. Then there was little cultural and intellectual development. There was less development uh, people can see at that time. So we will uh, study about what is the uh, concept of what is feudalism. The emergence of feudalism was another major change that took place in Europe during the Middle Ages. The word feudalism comes from the Latin word feudum, which means so Latin word feudum. Friends, it, the word feudalism has come from the Latin word called feudum. What does it mean? It means uh, the piece of land. It means the feudal, the Latin word feudal means a piece of land. Friends, it means the piece of land which is granted in return for services. Friends, uh, if uh, somebody does, does the service, then he or she or she was given a piece of land that is called the feudalism. Under feudalism, land was of utmost importance. Yes, now also. And most of the Europe was organized into manors or estates. So what happened then? The vassals were the masters of these manors. They protected the people and maintained law and order, means they were the chief we can say. Feudalism flourished in Europe from the 8th to 14th century CE. And in that, the role of church was, it took a major hand in the development of Europe. In medieval Europe, the, Europe, the church dominated people's lives. In medieval time, Learning became limited to religious centers and monasteries. There was hardly any development of knowledge because it was limited to the religious centers. People were uh, had to go to the religious centers for getting any knowledge. So this was all about feudalism students. So I hope you would have understood the chapter very well. Once again, I will repeat you that at the end of the video, I will say, I will say every time that whenever you are going through this video, please refer to the textbook. If you have not bought the textbook, then please buy it. Then only you can know what I am teaching.
Good students, my message is stay home, stay safe. And for today, I am bidding goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye.